Hi, today we're back on the EEPROM programmer, and there are three functions that I want to make sure that I get accomplished today. All three are going to be triggered from the client interacting with the Arduino, but the Arduino is going to be responsible for sending the control messages back to the client to make sure that the Arduino and the client are both in the right state. Now, I want to be able to write, read, and verify an EEPROM. And the last thing I want to do in this video is I want to take the programmer, take it off of breadboard and put it onto a Sartreful breadboard so that I can have it a little bit more robust as I continue to go through my development and testing, but I can still make changes if I need to before I commit it to PCB. Let's get into that. Hi, I'm Adam. I'm still building a 16-bit computer from scratch. I'm no expert here. I make lots of mistakes. So many mistakes, I've actually had to reboot my computer build. I hope you will find my journey interesting, and I hope you will join me as I learn along the way. Okay, so to understand what we need to do, we need to first take a look at the interaction that takes place. I've got a client and Arduino and an EEPROM, and the client interacts with the Arduino. The Arduino then interacts with the EEPROM kind of being an intermediary between the client and the EEPROM itself. So let me simplify an example here. Uh, if the user issues an S command to see the status of the EEPROM, the Arduino then parses that S command and then sends the appropriate information to the EEPROM. The EEPROM then responds by providing the contents of that status register. The Arduino then interprets what the meaning of each of those bits are in the status register and provides a text response back to the client. And the client then just, without any further interaction, just displays the contents of that data. But we need to do something a little bit more complicated. If I want to program an entire EEPROM, I have to do that in blocks of 64 bytes, and that's based on how the EEPROM is prepared to receive the data. So here's kind of the plan, and as I get into writing this, I may end up changing what I do, but here's what I'm setting out to do in the moment here. So the user issues a write command for write an entire binary to the EEPROM. The Arduino is going to parse that write command or W command and issue back to the client a mode change request to acknowledge the fact that this has been received. And I'm thinking using break, break, break for that. None of that would be displayed on the screen. That would be intercepted by the client. The client then receives the mode change request and issues an acknowledgement back to the Arduino. The Arduino then, having waiting for an acknowledgement or a timeout, receives the acknowledgement and then says, hey, I want you to go into write mode. And then the client then receives the write mode request and prompts the user then which file is to be sent to the Arduino to write to the EEPROM. Now, if the user cancels, it's going to send a NAC back to the Arduino, allowing the Arduino to get into a known good state. If the user does properly select a file, then it's going to send that act back to the Arduino saying that get ready to receive data. And then the Arduino waits for a page to come from the client. The client then goes into a loop to send all the data in 64 byte pages, sending a page where the Arduino receives a page, programs the EEPROM, and then sends an ACK or a NAC if there's a problem back to the client. The client then receives the ACK or NAC, cancels if need be if it receives the NAC, updates the user that a page has been sent. I'm thinking just a period on the screen to indicate progress, and then goes back and sends the next page. Now this is complicated, and this is not nearly as trivial as just throwing something at the Arduino. The Arduino does not have a lot of data storage available to it, and I've certainly used quite a bit of that. And so from that perspective, we've got to have an interaction that takes place here. All right, now let's address the burning question. And that is, Adam, why are you having the Arduino be in control of this? You're, you're issuing the command to the client. Why can't the client tell the Arduino to go into a write mode? 
And it's a fair question, and it's really just a design decision. I could do either way, but I'm already processing and parsing commands on the Arduino and have the ability to parse this already. I don't want to have to intercept and parse a command on the client as well. It basically ends up duplicating code. So from that perspective, it's just a simple design decision that I don't believe is going to cause me a whole lot of heartache. All right, time to break out the uh, Arduino IDE and my Visual Studio code, and let's start writing some code to write an EE prompt. Okay, I think I've got the right figured out. Now, the handshake and the interaction is exactly what I had presented originally in the first segment of this video. So if I decide I want to write, it pops up a dialog box I can select the binary that I want to send, and I want to send control ROM1, and it starts that programming process. Now, I haven't timed it, but in real time, this is actually less than a minute to complete that. Now, if I dump the contents of the EEPROM, they actually look exactly like what is being presented here. So as a matter of fact, each of the bytes lines up the way I've got this. So that's actually working properly. Well, how do I know? Let's fill the entire EEPROM with hex FF. And now if I dump address zero, it's exactly what I filled it with. Now if I resend my control ROM one and dump that first page again, it's exactly what I intend it to be. Now the last page also gets programmed as well. It happens to be all zeros, but it does actually get programmed. Let's start with the Arduino code here. I've got this function to write an entire EEPROM. So it does send that break, break, break. And I say break because we used to use control C to get this character. It happened to be intercepted by the operating system, but it really is an ETX or in text control signal. I changed the timeout from the 20 odd days or whatever happens to be ridiculous timeout to 500 milliseconds so that I can interact a little bit more controlled. Waits for an act to come back, says it's going to write, waits for an act to come back, and then it goes into this loop where it is actually receiving a page and then turns around and writes that page onto the EE prompt. Now that function was reused because I also used it for filling an EEPROM. And I also set it up so that I can turn on and off, well, actually on and off the built-in LED on the Arduino Nano. Once each page is done, it sends an app back and that's basically it. So when I come back, it resets the timeout so that the Arduino is waiting nearly indefinitely for some input the way it was set up originally. The client is also pretty simple. It checks to see if it's got a break character. And once there are three break characters or ETX characters, technically, it sends back an ACK and then reads the actual type of transmission that it's supposed to be doing. And I've stubbed out for reading and verifying, but I do have send binary here. That function is up here, send binary. And yeah, it is not written properly for a QT application. I am tying up the user interface for an extended period of time. I'm using QT6 to get a file name. It's got dialog boxes built in specifically for finding an existing file. So here's the uh, function to do that. If an escape was set, then it aborts and sends a knack back to the Arduino resetting everything, putting it all back into the correct state, opens the file and then 64 bytes at a time, it reads and then turns around and writes those 64 bytes to the Arduino. And of course, I've got a little bit going on here, here with the user interface, making sure that every time it prints a dot, it repaints that user interface. I'm doing that explicitly, otherwise it just kind of cues everything up and doesn't refresh until the very end. And then for each page, it waits for an act to come back. And if it gets something other than an act, then it fails the fails the transmission. It's relatively simple, but it did take me a little bit to debug it. 
All right, next up is reading an EEPROM and writing its contents to the disk. Let me start working on that. Okay, I think I've got read working properly now. So if I go to read the EEPROM, you notice I can now save the binary, and I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite the file that already exists, and it starts pulling the data from the EEPROM and sends it through the Arduino to the client. You can see here that it is actually writing the EEPROM. Now, if I look here, you can see my test.bin is actually 32,768 bytes, exactly 32K. And the contents actually look very similar to what would be on the EEPROM. If I was to dump address zero, yeah, those look the same. I'll go one better here. If I actually use diff to compare it against the control logic one bin, diff reports that they're identical. That's a good success. That is a round trip of control ROM one, writing it to the EEPROM in the previous segment, reading it back from the EEPROM in this segment, writing it to a separate file, and then comparing those two to make sure that they are still identical. Perfect. Okay, so what were the code changes needed to make that happen? Well, the, on the Arduino, I created this new read function and it is responsible for just like the write function the handshake to get the communication started and then reading a page off the EEPROM and then turning around and writing that data to the serial port now I did have to be very cautious here to make sure that the serial.print function is the character version because a byte is interpreted as if it's a number and it turns it into an ASCII zero zero if you will as opposed to the actual zero ASCII code, which would be known. There's a lot of copy and paste between the write function and the read function. They look very similar to each other, and there's a reason for that. I only had to change reads to writes and writes to reads effectively. On the client side, I basically had the same problem with the same solution. So I now have a read binary function that is here, if I can select it, and it looks very similar to the write or send binary function. Again, translating reads for writes, writes for reads, and getting a save file name as opposed to a open or read file name, if you will. And again, I had to translate the reads from the serial and writes to the file, which were exactly the opposite in the send binary function. Other than that, it's really a lot of code duplication, if you will, but the directions have changed. And then I loop that in here to handle the case of reading. All right, so the last thing now to do is this verify. Now verify from the client's perspective looks like a send. A verify from the Arduino's perspective looks like a read with the exception that the Arduino is gonna compare what is actually being sent to what's on the EEPROM and make sure that everything is identical. Let me work on that, I'll be right back. Okay, verify came together pretty easily. And so if I now try to verify against my test that I just read, you would expect those to match. All the dots that showed up indicate a matching page. If I was to do that again and say compare against control ROM 4, the pages that don't match show up as X's. It doesn't fail with the first mismatch. It goes through and reads the entire EEPROM. What did I do? Well, on the Arduino, there was a verify, and again, it's a copy and paste, and I did have to pick and choose from both read and write to make sure that I was picking up all the right information here. So I have to read off the serial one character or one byte at a time, and I then have to read an entire page off the ROM and then do a byte by byte comparison of those. I assume that the ROM is going to match and if I find something that doesn't match then I change that it hasn't. I do an inline conditional here where if it's good I send an ACK and if it's not good I send a NAC back. On the client side it was a little bit simpler. I just used send binary. And the way I was able to do that is because I have the determination of what the actual function is going to be handled as a wrapping function around the send and read. 
Adam, why didn't you do them both the same? Yeah, I'm sorry. I did not write the code exactly the same manner. And they are not congruent that way. I'm going to take that as a note of something to clean up. But in the meantime, one of the things I'm looking at here is I am not even coming close to the end of my program space on my Arduino. So there's no driving need to turn around and optimize this code. Performance is pretty good. I could probably get it a little bit better, but it doesn't take forever to program one of the EE prompts. It's certainly much faster than some of the older style parallel EE prompts can program. I think my Tommy prompt is capable of programming the same size parallel EE prompt in about 20 seconds. I'm getting about 30 seconds. So I'm not seeing a, a, a dire need to turn around and improve performance here. So when I commit this code to GitHub, and I will have a link in the description, and there's one up on the screen. When I commit this code to GitHub, yeah, it's going to have some flaws. It's not going to have the polish, but you're welcome to download it and look at it and make recommendations or use it yourself or copy it and paste it into your own project. Okay, the last thing I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to deal with the breadboard. While the breadboard's great for prototyping, I'm looking for something a little bit more permanent and I want to be able to reclaim this breadboard for other tests that I need to do. So what I want to do is I want to transfer it from here onto this. This is a solderful breadboard, so it's exactly the same pinning and layout as this, with the exception that you use solder instead of pushing it into a bread. So this is just a little bit more robust and a little bit more permanent. To that end, I've got an eight pin socket that I will solder down onto this end. I've got these, which are 15. Now they don't make 15 pin headers like this. So what I did is I actually pulled a pin out, snipped off the end and took a utility knife to shave that down a little bit. And so that'll allow me to solder this header in here. And if I absolutely have to use the Arduino, if I absolutely have to use the Arduino for something else, I can pop it off of here and move it as I need to. So 15 pin header, 15 pin header. All right, let me get this stuff moved over here to here and I'll get the soldering iron fired up and we'll see if we can't uh, make that a little bit more permanent. Okay, the hardest part of soldering all of this up was literally making sure that I don't cross any wires. Because I pulled the Arduino out of the breadboard, I had to make sure that I stuck it back in to move things one-to-one -one from the breadboard to the solder protoboard, if you prefer to call it that. My plan is to eventually convert this into a PCB. Not quite ready to do that yet, but it, it is close. It's very simple circuit, and I want to make sure that I have it in something that is a little bit easier for you if you wish to download this and make use of this. The KiCad schematics and file will be made available when I have them ready to go up on the GitHub. And I'll throw a link to that in the description. And you've seen it already on the screen. All right, I think I'm about done here. Okay, now if I plug this in and launch, it is working. And there's my EE prompt. Absolutely fantastic. I am pleased with that result. Let me clean up my mess here. Okay, that now wraps up the infrastructure I need in order to manage and program an SPI EEPROM, serial EEPROM. The next step is going to be to figure out how to read that and store that into RAM on the build. And for that, I need to be able to hold the entire circuit and reset for an extended period of time. It's going to take a little bit to get there. I need to think on that a little bit. In the meantime, the next video is going to be focused on the program counter. I want to take a look at that PCB. I am hoping to be able to bodge that so that it works very similar to what I've got emulating in software. It's not going to be an exact match to it because I've got latches and line drivers, but the signaling should be the same. And I want to be able to at least continue to do some development while I am putting together an order that justifies the shipping cost. In real time here, as I record this, I'm just a few days into the new year and the last week has been incredible for the channel. The growth has been just unbelievable. And if you're a new subscriber here, 
I want to say welcome. We'll see you soon.